to this week's energy reading for week October 3rd through to October 10th, 2022. My name is Aileen. I am the founder and lead mentor and energy guide here at Energetic Insights Co. Thank you for being here and tuning in to this energy reading. So before we get started, I am so excited to do this reading this week. I didn't even like let my hair dry. I was like, oh my God, I got to record and share this with everybody. This is my favorite energy of the year. So it's not high energy whatsoever. It's a mutable energy where you really can take charge and control of your situation. So the energy is neither working in your favor or opposing you. You really have an opportunity here to make things your own and to start having introspection. So I want to ground this discussion and I really want to dedicate our air here. I want to dedicate our reading today to the people of Iran and I've been thinking about the massive changes that different parts of the world are experiencing right now and the privilege it is to live in North America, to live in Canada and to have ignorance and not to be in the middle of conflict that is going on, revolutions that are going on. But does that mean that you know, here in North America, we escape these things? God, no, no. And um, there's so much going on here as well. But the focus and spotlight is over in Iran as well as there is also things happening in Ukraine and Russia in the UK. I don't know if you guys noticed last week, but the British pound and the American dollar actually did close at the same market value. So there's a lot of structures that are changing right now, which is causing a lot of uncertainty and when there's uncertainty on the global scale it directly is correlated to our economic structures okay so people um, will not be as inclined to be investing um, at the normal speed you know the Canadian dollar and things here will be a little bit more fragile which means the ec the economy is going to continue to go through these you know contrictions and they're going to continue to go through um, you know, these large turnovers until we kind of see things start to settle down on a global scale. When that will happen? Not anytime soon. It's not going to happen anytime this year, and it's definitely not going to happen in the first quarter of 2023. Where things will start to turn, unfortunately, to tell you is 2025. So there are changes um, that are happening right now that are the shifts are so dramatic in nature that new structures are being called to build new foundation so that's a little bit of an impromptu collective reading i wanted to to give you because you know as an observer of energies that are happening not just within you know myself and the collective and you know the clients that i serve but as being a citizen of this world in this timeline i like to see how things are functioning because just because something is happening in the east does not mean that I won't eventually come on over into the west side, into the west hemisphere, and start to affect the structures that we have here, okay? So shifts happen, you know, gravity moves, we are in constant rotation of things. So during this period, we're going to get a little bit of a break for October 3rd through the 10th. And <laughs> this, is, this is how you can work with this energy. So when Mercury goes into retrograde, a lot of people, you know, I think it's kind of become a pop culture thing where people are like, oh my God, it's Mercury retrograde, I'm going to hide under the table. There are different people that experience the effects of Mercury retrograde. Some of us experience it quite intensely if we're very tuned in. And other people are like, eh, didn't feel it, have no idea what you're talking about. Will they always have the benefit and the privilege of escaping the wrath of Mercury retrograde? No, I don't think so. Um... We are meant to learn from the planets going in retrograde, not just Mercury. Mercury, because you know it's quite a fast moving planet, we feel the effects of it here. So if you don't know what Mercury retrograde is, it's exactly the way it sounds. So it's when Mercury decides to go, oh, I'm gonna go and travel in the opposite direction of what is natural to me instead of traveling along its natural gravitational curve, okay? So we're all going in one direction, and then when we're in retrograde, by we I mean planets, natural flow is to go one way. Retrograde is when they go, I'm going to try to go backwards now. So that kind of like pull back and boomerang 
of that energy mirrors back onto earth and it fucks up with our systems and mercury is the planet responsible for communication so it affects our communication it affects technology there's like a lot and it's said to not go and plan vacations and take flights and go on long trips or rely on technology during the retrograde period because it can bring unpredictability into the day so <laughs> nobody likes when things aren't going as planned so when we are aware of mercury retrograde we will try not to put our important stuff during that time period so not to launch projects not to execute not to make rash decisions it's kind of like a holding pattern for us and that's kind of like our life safety jacket, right? Like knowing how Mercury retrograde influences the things around us really help us to plan better and be supported. So I wanted to talk to you today about the four pillars of creativity because creativity is coming through as this energy that's like, um, hi, like, can everybody please get back to basics? And can we please get our thinking caps on in terms of let's all go into the imagination. So imagination is, I don't know why it's so overlooked in the, in the mundane 3D world. Having an imagination kind of like, you know, has been, has been paired up to mean that you are kind of out there and you're eccentric and, and it kind of like means that you're irresponsible and you're flighty and you're fantasizing all the time and yada yada. So it's gotten a bad nomer, okay? So to say that you have an imagination or you're creative, people get this kind of archetype which is negative, it has negative connotations, and it's really kept people limiting their ability to really uh, open up their mind and to have the freedom to express their creativity. Because we have imagination space, but we keep it so private, and we keep ourselves so removed from our imagination that we give ourselves a lot of rules to not operate in that space because our imagination is like our natural intelligence. So sometimes it's throwing things at us that our like human brain can't process and make sense out of. So our human brain will be like, oh my God, I don't know why I thought of that. I can never tell anybody I'm so ashamed of that because logically it doesn't make sense. So a lot of us get really frightened and we hold back from expressing and going deeper into our imagination. And our imagination for some of us is a place that doesn't feel comfortable and we don't feel that we belong there. So where does the sense of belonging coming from? This is a really good, you know, like segue from our conversation last week. When we are children, our need to be creative and to express is like top tier, top tier for personal development, personal growth, for personal safety, everything, okay? It's our imagination. When we execute on our imagination, and like we've all seen little kids play, right? Like my daughter is like the quintessential example of this where like creativity has no rules. So when she gets in her creative space, and I respect it a lot, and I've had to really teach myself to stop being the helicopter parent and cleaning up and, and putting rules in, inside of her, like her play, but they will just grab from here and pull from there and then, you know, move on to the next thing and then come back and then re-engineer and, and reevaluate and then pull it apart and then abandon it and come back. So there's freedom in that expression. And like a lot of us don't get that access, right? We don't get that access and that opportunity to be able to be so free and wild and open with our creativity when we're being raised, when we're growing up, especially if we're fighting for competition and we have siblings and, you know, there's other things going on that are intersecting with that freedom. So the thing, the problem is, is that our imagination, our creative identity gets put away and we get disconnected from it. So then what happens, we go to school, we do what we're told, you know, we follow suit, we, we, we stay in line, we stay in line with what we need to do. And then we get to this point of exhaustion and we don't know how to get ourselves out of it. So when we're looking around and we're searching for ideas to get our energy up, to boost our adrenaline, to like just fucking feel life again, to reconnect and like laugh at something, be joyous about something, guess what? Those emotions are not available for you. Those emotions are not there because they are so deep. They're so deep in the subconscious of your mind and body and soul that they can't be easily retrieved. So when the mind recognizes that, recognizes that there is a disconnect there, it's like, oh my God, we're broken. We're broken. We can't 
think of a goddamn thing to be like excited about. I don't know what's an interest of mine. I don't know what is a hobby of mine. I don't really know what are my likes and dislikes. Do I like painting? Do I like coloring? Do I like cosplay? Do I, do I want to try new things with my sensuality and my expression and my sexuality? Like, do I want to go there? Do I want to do taboo things? And it just becomes this like almost like explosive area within ourselves that we can that that we then can't contain because the unknowing becomes uncontrollable because we are so then connected to our unknowingness and that's what kind of catapults the void for us when we're searching for something and there's nothing there that we can find so then we're like oh my god we've maximized we've reached this limit that we didn't even know was there and the way to like push ourselves out of that energy fold is to crack open the imagination which is a lot to do with your ability to compromise and your ability to be flexible and getting yourself some rest yes the key the key to activating your imagination is rest a lot of it okay the mind needs to the mind needs to rely on you just as much as you need to rely on the mind the mind needs to know that you're going to be good to it the spirit and the soul need to know that you're going to be good to it your body needs to know that you're got to be good to it right so the more you invest in getting to sleep getting your nutrition getting your exercise getting your wellness in the more your your mind will will kind of release the hold that it has on that narrow view of the world and those instructions that it's like hanging on to and it's going to start to relax because it's saying oh we can actually sleep through the night oh we can actually have a meal without scrolling emails oh my god we can actually do something without being in front of the tv without learning not to spill food in front of us with answering text messages with having our mind open in all these different portals so like we are basically like contract, like we are um, squishing, contracting our own intelligence when our own natural intelligence, we're sabotaging ourselves when we keep ourselves so super busy. So one of the pillars, and I, I didn't mean to take so long to get here. So the first pillar of engaging your creativity is awareness, okay, to check in and be like, and pull yourself out of that fucking rat race and be like, wait a minute, one recognize you have a problem and that you need to put new systems in place to get yourself out of that scrolling and eating in front of the tv going to bed super late drinking wine until you fall asleep kind of like self-destructive sabotaging pattern two listen when people tell you that you have a problem listen when people are warning you listen when other strangers are taking notice and saying you're getting tired so this is really about removing and 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 not taking it personally and being like okay i am hearing all the time it is being reported to me that this is how my i'm showing up in the world and instead of being defensive about it have a really grounded mature emotional response and ask i wasn't or say you know accept and say i wasn't aware of that like how am I coming off that way? And I know people attempt this and they, they'll say something like, what do you mean? You're just, you know, whatever. Or someone might cut you off when you're trying to express your fatigue. And then they might say like, oh, you're like, and dismiss you, you know, dismiss you because of hormones, because of life, because you're raising kids, because you work a lot, blah, 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 blah. So people will perpetuate your excuses for you. You know, sometimes they'll fill in your own blanks. When you see that happening, you got to be like, whoa, <laughs> we are not good for each other. If you are in constant contact with people that are like feeding you like the same energy that you're trying to evolve past, it's time to make some new friends. It's time to build out different communities and grow because if you're around the same people that do the same thing, they're not growing, you're not growing. You got to realize that you will never grow if you are with the same people who want to also stay stuck and down, okay? If you want to make a change, you got to evaluate the people you spend time with, okay? So pillar number one is awareness. And it's probably the hardest one for people because it's like reality check, okay? But like this is not working here. It's time to, for us to do something differently. And the thing is, is guys, like no one is coming to save you. No one is coming to give you like that change that you're looking for. Nobody is going to just hand anything to you in life. 
you gotta put in the work, okay? And we are about to head into a season where you really gotta be super clear on who you are because your values are gonna be coming into question very soon with the end of October. So our second pillar is curiosity, okay? Curiosity is an amazing um, oracle medicine, I call it. Because the moment your mind sees something, the, the moment that you're engaged with something that's like holding your curiosity, hang on to that and chase it, okay? Because it's like, oh my God, that's something that I have now created an awareness for that's making me feel really deeply about it, whatever it may be. So you might be driving and then you see some horses to the side and you're like, oh my God, I love those horses. I remember when I was a kid, I always wanted to go horseback riding, but I never had the opportunity to because my parents couldn't afford it. But hey, now I'm an adult and I can afford to go horseback riding. So should I sign up for, you know, a weekend lesson? So that's how your curiosity can then become unraveled and you can start your self-discovery process. And it's fun. It's so, so super fun. The best thing I did for myself last year was follow my curiosity into the yoga studio. I had no idea that it would end up transforming my life. I had no idea. I wasn't looking for that. I was just kind of like, everyone tells me that I'm burnt out. Everybody tells me that I'm kind of like, you know, rigid. I wasn't, I wasn't laughing. That's when I knew my life kind of like, hit a really shitty spot because like nothing made me laugh anymore. It's just like everyone's stupid. And I was just so sarcastic. Like I couldn't even be like everything that came out of my mouth was just so dry and like hard to like, I can't even, Oh my God, I don't even like past Aileen. Like let's never even talk about her again, but she, you know, she's grown and super proud. But th what I'm saying is that like I was so disconnected with myself that I couldn't find the lightness in life. I couldn't find the humor in life. Everything was just misery on top of misery and judgment and ridicule and, and criticism and sarcasm. And I had a very harsh view towards others and myself, most importantly towards myself. So my hypercriticism of myself was projected onto other people. So I hid this really, really well because I've always... A kind person and I'm always a nice person but the moment I turn my back I'd be like you know and that existed in my shadow world and no one's going to admit that to you nobody but you know when people kind of greet you and they go hey you know they got that ha, that like hype run <laughs> if you hear that ha, run okay that high pitch like that person probably doesn't want to hear from you uh, sorry to break you, <laughs> but if someone meets you where you're at with your energy, like, how are you? That's a little bit different. That's a little bit different, okay? If you're, or if you, like, find yourself floating to that high, it means you're uncomfortable. You know, that's your throat chakra communicating with you. Okay, so the third pillar of finding your way into your creative energy is initiation. So we talked about that in that horse example. So you see something that kind of sparks the interest. You know, you only just need a little spark to be able to get that, that response from your body, that guttural response or an emotional response. It depends on your human design. I'd love to connect with you on that. Um, if, you're, if your gut is like kind of giving you that, oh, oh my God. And like, you just got to like follow up on it. Take the time to remove yourself from the busyness of the world and invest in your curiosity and not just invest in it, but like initiate the research to get you to that spot. And I'm going to also share this story with you. So I had this client who we're not working together anymore, but she was very curious about making um, additional income. So this is actually a very common question people come to me for. And they're like, oh, how can I, how can I make more money? I don't have time, but I need to make more money. I can't go back to school. I can't stop paying things and blah, blah, blah. Very like reasonable and logical topical questions to have. So I said to her, okay, how much do you want to supplement your income by? Like, let's start there. By so what I wanted to do was to get her away from like the gap of impossibility because that's where she was, where she was like, oh my God, I don't know how to get to the thing that I want. Like, here's the thing that I want and here's where I am. And that gap is so large and it's like so overwhelming. So it's like, okay, let's start to create space here because it's just like in yoga. Like we see these beautiful 
you know, folds and bends. And it's like, <laughs> you don't know the emotional journey that you have to take to be able to, and the devotion and dedication to be able to get into those folds and get into those, into those positions. So when, when I said to her, okay, how much is it that you want to supplement your income by? She didn't even know. So I'm like, no problem. Let's talk through it. Like where, where's the constraint in your budget? Doesn't have a budget. So now we're building awareness, building curiosity, and now the initiation, which is like, let's get a budgeting system in place. Let's actually figure out like, what is, what is the goal? Is it $2,000 a month? Is it 5,000? Like, what is it? What is that? baseline that you want to start to work for yourself and then what is the low-hanging fruit what is the easiest thing that you can do right now she was an accountant and we just happened to meet during tax season last year so then I said to her I'm like listen uh you already have phenomenal skills at your disposal that you can now commercialize that you can now you know start to kind of go and and play around in the private market I'm like everybody hates spreadsheets you know you could create a template about like how to you know, create something for like managing a small business or I think or our nonprofit space or whatever. And then you could just sell a template on an automated sign up sheet. And then I was kind of telling her like, you know, you you need to like put invest some money into it up front. Or before you do anything, you could just go to your friends and family who are like, and then just say like, hey guys, I'm thinking about creating a template. You know, would you pay 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 bucks? Like what's your budget that you would put into this thing that's going to like save you a ton of time and like headache during tax season. So we did a lot of brainstorming and I'll tell you where she is today. Nowhere. <laughs> she didn't execute on it. She didn't execute on it because she was just, she got stuck and lost in that gap. And I know, and now she's actually coming back and we're going to have another chat later on this week. That's she gave me permission to share the story because she was like, at the time that you're getting advice, it's hard for it all to sink in because you you kind of feel like you're behind. So like that feeling of being behind kind of keeps you from moving forward. So then I want to offer this to you. If you're feeling that, you know, the awareness and curiosity, and you're like, I did that, I did that, I did that. And then you're stuck at execution. Wherever you are in life is exactly where you're meant to be. You know, look around you this season in particular to kind of clean up those loose ends, okay? So this is what I mean at the beginning of the reading when I was saying, you know, it's not really going for you right now. It's not going against you. It's just kind of like at this period where you can exist in a vacuum and you can do a review. You can look um, look at what you already have available to you. This is the thing, like we forget how much natural talent we already have. We take it for granted. So like, let's be really honest and think about the things that people compliment us on. Think about the things that are like naturally easy for us that we're already talking to our people about. In this example, you know, like this past client, accounting. This is something that, you know, is, is her learned talent. And she also has like a beautiful soul and spirit that she likes to take time to walk people through the learning curve as something as like, you know, frustrating for myself, you know, and others as is creating spreadsheets. So we would appreciate people that go out of their way to put a spreadsheet template together. And we are very willing to, you know, give money towards that solution. Oh, my elbow. So that's the thing. That's like the thing that holds us back from execution is that we don't know how to show off that we know things. We don't know how to assert our talents into the market space. We don't know how to say like, here I am, take it world, because we get filled up with so much doubt. And we get filled up with um, our, 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 our disconnect, right? It's that gap that we create in our, in our imagination because through visualization, through affirmations, that all happens in the imagination space. And it takes a lot of self-respect to be able to go into the imagination and say, all right, I'm going to visualize putting this spreadsheet together and I have a group of 40 people that need this right now. I can see myself creating it. I'm getting excited. I get to pick out my logo and purchase my domain. And I'm going to put, like, put a business card together. And oh my gosh, by the end of the week, I'm actually going to be an entrepreneur. This is amazing. This is a new role. I've elevated. I've done something. I've surprised myself. I've shocked others. I've broken out of my limitation. 
So we need our imagination. We need to rest and we need to make that our priority and our focus because this is how the new world is going to operate. You are going to be given so much more space and autonomy than you actually think is possible, okay? So that is the energy reading for this week and a little bit of a zone of genius um, chat here. So very much so keynotes, refine and rediscover your zones of genius, um, building that mental fortitude to awaken the creative channel. So this requires curiosity, dedication, okay? It doesn't cost a cent to be curious about things. It just takes doing it. It just takes the investment and the willingness to do this sort of beautiful thing. So this is your sign right now to take action. This is your permission. This is your validation. Don't waste any time, okay? Start building out, you know, tiers of independence for yourself, not just one little step along the corporate ladder, but build up multiple staircases of success for yourself that you can jump through and around and dictate your own terms. So, my friends, you are responsible for fueling your own fires and passions. And they're all ignited through that natural combustion of curiosity and, of course, deep, deep, well-deserving rest, okay? So, tips on calibrating your energy. Shut down your phone, like, at least, please, at least minimum half an hour before you go to bed. Make sure you have a thorough bedtime routine. Brush those teeth, okay? Floss, do your night creams, your night oils. Be nice and gentle, massage your temples, you know, bring your eyelids down, close, close them in and do this nice relaxation practice. I don't know if you guys have ever done this. I do this with my clients sometimes where we just simply put our fingers in front of our eyelids here and just kind of move in semicircles. You feel the energy that way and it's actually really relaxing. You could also try some oil on your on your wrists here and rub them together almond oil eucalyptus lemon anything that kind of like makes you feel good and then kind of like bring it close to you and you know start to center yourself that way get yourself grounded get your sensory system and your nervous system in a beautiful spot and also drink lots and lots of water it is also my responsibility <laughs> as an energy reader to tell you to please prepare your body for the winter season. Get your vitamins in, bump up your nutrition, bump up your exercise, get your body in the best possible shape in mind, body, and soul that you can. If you want some additional support, I'd love to guide you through any of my services, starting with a human design reading and mini coaching session, which are now on for 20% off. I'm also enrolling for my signature program, The Rattle Collective, which is a survey course, digital course, which is for the woman who is finding herself on her spiritual path and going through that stage of the void where everything is dark and hopeless, and I bring you to a place of renewal and transcendence. So we take all the negative stuff, we make it super positive. You get six workbooks, a beautiful, beautifully designed membership area, as well as support from yours truly. So I would love to see you on a discovery call to see if you're a good fit for the Rattle Collective. I think you are as well. I will leave a link for my calendar if you guys want to discuss any other options. But that is it for this week. And thank you for being here. Bye-bye.